Hello, ladies and men and non-binary friends. Oh my goodness, uh, Ed and Caleb here, noticing now that um, we needed to maybe take a drink and suck the uh, Cool Ranch Dorito out of our teeth before we started, so it goes away, I promise, but oh my god, what a foray back into this. And welcome back to the... the... Hello ladies and men and non-binary friends and welcome back to the What Knitting Taught Me podcast with me, Caleb. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get talking about knitting. Nope. Hello ladies and men and non-binary friends and welcome back to the What Knitting Taught Me podcast, a podcast or a video cast or a video YouTube channel where I sit down and talk about what I've been creating and some of my intentions for the creating that I have. I was doing so well. Planned. Hello, ladies and men and non-binary friends, and welcome back to What Knitting Taught Me, a knitting podcast um, or Fiverr podcast with yours truly, Caleb. As Baxter has so kindly reminded us, uh, we need to do some introductions because for me, it's been a good almost year and a half since I've done this and my life has changed quite a bit. So, um, like I said earlier, my name is Caleb. You can find me on Instagram as Caleb9513. I'm thinking about creating a an Instagram for this channel. Um, it's one of my goals in 2023 to grow in the knitting community. Um, and having a podcast Instagram or channel Instagram might be the way to go. Um, a little bit about me. I live in Kansas City, Kansas. There is the Kansas City, Missouri that we all know and love and call home because basically the Kansas City Metro is Kansas City. Um, but I live in Kansas City, Kansas. Currently I live with my little brother. He is my roommate. Um, and my two dogs and our two cats. So this is Baxter. He is our 10 year old Yorkie, he, or my 10 year old Yorkie, he was our family dog who lived with my parents. And then we had to shuffle some dogs around when my parents were moving and Baxter just decided he wanted to stay with me. So there's Baxter and over behind me on the couch, we have Ivy. And I'm not gonna turn the camera or anything to show Ivy, uh, mainly because it took too long to set up this shot. Um, but she is my dog. I've had her since I was, um, a junior in my undergraduate degree. If you've been with me before, you know that we also, I also had a boxer named Lola. And unfortunately, Lola has since passed away. She developed a condition called spondylosis where it was, um, she was unable to walk any longer. Ivy wanted you to know that she's here. If you can see her just in the corner there. So Lola has passed away, but in her absence, she has sent us two kittens, Escanor and Larry, who are currently in the office taking a nap. It is the cutest damn thing I've ever seen. They are two kittens, they're about five months old, that we adopted from the Greater Kansas City Humane Society, or the Humane Society of Greater Kansas City, um, and they're just adorable. They told us Escanor, um, which I guess is an anime reference, I um, was unaware of that. You wanna come say hello? Come here. This is Ivy Moo Cow. Call her Ivy Moo Cow because she likes to graze on grass and she's a heifer, but we love her. That's right. Anyway, I was talking about the kittens. 
uh, Escanor, which is an anime reference, and then Larry. Uh, those are the names that they came with from the shelter. All of my pets have been named before I've um, adopted them, and I've always kept their names um, for the most part. But the kittens are lovely and wonderful. Escanor, the silver kitty, is probably the cutest, most beautiful cat I have ever seen with his little tufts on top of his ears. Oh my goodness, so cute. Uh, and they told us he was the cuddly, sociable one. Absolutely not. Um, he is the shit of the two. He loves to play, so I guess he is rambunctious, <clears throat> but um, he does not like cuddling. If you pick him up, he howls, which like, fine, I respect your boundaries. But now my Larry. My Larry, when he's in the mood to cuddle, oh my goodness. Well, I'm talking biscuits. He's making biscuits. He's purring like an Aston Martin. Um, just an amazing cat overall. So um, that is that. Like I said, my little brother is living with me now. Previously, I'd been living here for, by myself for about a year and a half, but uh, Jonathan took a job here in Kansas City, and I get half of my mortgage paid for <laughs> by having a roommate. So that is why he's here. I think that catches you up on what, who I am, who lives in my house, which is kind of weird to talk about. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So in this video, um, I'm not really going to, well, okay, first of all, I also have something I need to address looking here. As I hold things up, you're going to notice that I have some tubes attached to me. Currently, I have um, a bacterial infection that has to be treated with an antibiotic IV 24-7 for two weeks. So um, that's what that is. Uh, not that it's any of your business, but I just wanted to, to share because I've been talking for seven minutes now and um, I'm sure have shown it and haven't explained what it is. So I am technically bionic um, right now. And does that make me a transformer? Probably. Anyway, so I'm filming this kind of as just an introduction video and a here's what my plans are in 2023. I am a busy person. I uh, teach third grade. I'm also a doctoral student at the University of Kansas, go Jayhawks, um, in the curriculum and teaching department. So my research actually focuses around how to best teach place value because it is my belief and the belief of many and research backs this up that place value is one of the most fundamental things that we teach um, and if we don't get place value you're not going to be successful in math or math is going to be much harder than it needs to be if you don't understand um, zero through nine and powers of ten so um, that's what my research is about I'll probably talk about it here and there um, I plan on having um, a weekly vlog not weekly but like a week in my life vlog every so often um, that will include the hours of reading that go along with that. Um, so why not talk about like what to expect on this channel? Um, for sure in January, because I have the time, because I'm currently off of work for two weeks because of the aforementioned treatment for, um, the bacterial infection in my spine, um, I have some time to do a week in my life vlog and um, work mm -hmm. on uh, a project vlog. I really like project vlogs, like I'm finding that that's what I enjoy watching on the internet. Um, people who are talking about the planning of their project and then their knitting, uh, their thoughts and their experiences while they're knitting because for me, knitting is a therapeutic thing, I'm very much a 
process knitter. Very rarely am I a product knitter. Um, and so um, often there's intention behind the projects that I'm knitting. And um, I like to reflect on that and have a record of it. I'm a big believer in journaling and um, just reflection in general. I'm a big believer and trying to be a more consistent doer of morning pages from um, The Artist's Way by, uh, I wanted to say Julia Child. That's not correct. Julia Cameron. Um, I, I love documenting and reflecting on things. Um, knitting for me is very reflective. I'm a process knitter. I think I might have said that already. And my projects are always with intention. And I like the idea of documenting the planning, the progress, the reflection on and the intention, and then the reflection on the finished object at the end. So um, expect that from me. And then also just like week in my life vlogs. Uh, if I'm not watching planning project, project vlogs, I'm watching weekly vlogs. Reading vlogs, like 24 hour readathon vlogs, or like um, the bookish part of the internet, they make amazing, amazing content. This video is kind of to outline my plans for 2023. You can expect a week in my life vlog and um, a project vlog, which is, um, finishing up some works in progress or whips. I have not that many actually. I'm also a big believer in dump that project if you are not enjoying it, but that's again, part of my process versus product knitting. Um, so I'll go over uh, in that video what whips that I have um, and the plans that I have for those and then setting the intention for those um, projects. Now I use the word intention because I have this weird thing about the word goals. Uh, I have pretty bad anxiety uh, around um, performance, like academic performance, uh, social performance, that sort of thing. So I don't like setting goals because I feel like I'm just setting myself up to fail. And so um, I like to think of more intentions because um, it's what we want to do and what we think of as our highest being, I guess. And um, that comes with the caveat of you're not gonna always be perfect, so it's okay if we don't fulfill those intentions. Uh, so that's that's my thought behind the word goal. I also really love language. Um, so, plans for 2023, just to kind of fill you in. Um, I am trying very, very hard to knit from my stash. I, as I mentioned before, I'm a doctoral student. I've just been in the hospital for a couple of days. Remember, bionic um, person. Uh, and so my life right now is kind of expensive and privilege of mine is that I had and still have to an extent some disposable income to purchase yarn with intentions. You're gonna hear that word so much from me. Um, and so I want to now knit through my yarn. I think we can be really susceptible to the hype of patterns and buy yarn immediately for it and then not make it. I know that I am definitely in that boat and in that category. So I have a lot of yarn that I purchased thinking, oh yes, I'm going to make this. And a lot of that yarn, I still am going to make that pattern, but um, I just haven't done it yet. Uh, so anyway, intention for 2023 is to knit through my stash. So at the end of each month, I'm hoping to do a wrap up to kind of like this, where I sit down, show you what I've uh, finished, and then go so over some of my stats for my works in progress, um, as well as like balls out of my stash. Um, it'll probably just be that. I tried to put in like yardage into a Google sheet 
uh, and like what the yarn is that I have and how much of it that I have, but mama, that was too overwhelming uh, for my ADHD brain to handle. The ADHD brain then made my anxious brain turn on and then that made my I'm gonna be an absolute bitch to everybody brain turn on. So uh, we stopped doing that. I have some intentions for projects and uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to have a walkthrough of kind of a vision board that I made um, for 2023 with projects that I know that I have stashed for that I still want to make. Um, although, talking about intentions, they have already changed. I was looking at the vision board. Some of those plans have already changed for the year. I hope you learned a little bit about me from this video. And I am so excited to connect with all of you. One of the things that I love so much about the fiber community and the yarn world is um, the friends that we make and the relationships that we forge that all start with this common love of um, string and stick. And that's truly something that is really important to me. So please, please, please comment, share, like, subscribe to this channel. I'm hoping to get this channel my first goal, intention, uh, milestone perhaps that I'd like to reach is 250 subscribers. Uh, and when we hit that, I will do a giveaway, I guess, um, of some of my stash. Why not? I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is, where you are. Know that I love you lots, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, I'm realizing I never talked about the sweater that I'm wearing. This is the Once in Floral by Max and Sear. It's originally knit in a fingering weight. I don't have time for that. I'm six foot five and have a 58 inch chest. Um, so like usually I knit around the 60 inch circumference, so I don't have time for fingering weight. Although I have like four sweater quantities of fingering weight that I'll be trying to knit through this year. But um, this is the Once in Floral by Max and Sear knit out of Cory Worsted, which is more of like a DK weight, a heavy DK light worsted weight. Um, in Jana is the green, the silver, it starts with an A, I don't know, and then the pink is Flora Morganite, my favorite color from Lobby MA. And then if you can see here, um, there wasn't a lot of contrast between the silver and the pink. So what I've done is I've gone and backstitched and embroidered the outline on the roses so that um, they pop off of the sweater, um, which I am calling that a design choice where I just have three roses not embroidered. I'll do it eventually. Um, so anyway, that is what I'm wearing. Okay, I was able to go and snag Mr. Larry Bernardo. He's being very cuddly right now. Um, as I say that, he is pushing off of me. But um, this is Larry. Say hi, Larry. Hi.